Hi, this is John with Fix It Planet, and today we've got an Apple Watch. This is the uh, larger version, 42 millimeter. And um, we're going to take the bands off first. Just press the little release button, and they slide right out. I'm going to warm it up a little bit and um, that'll help loosen the bond. We're going to go over a couple of things that are, I think, uh, noteworthy. This video is from start to finish, so some places in the video may be boring and you can just sort of skip those parts and go to the areas or the parts of the video that you're most interested in so we're going to start in that broken corner there to to get our gap started and that kind of makes it easier being that it's cracked in the corner kind of gives us an easy access it's a little hard to get the the gap started but once you get it started it's not so bad So once you get your gap started, you can get your pick in there and slide it around, break the, the seal. Personally, I don't think you should use metal tools. Um, I've seen some show metal tools. Um, this bracket I'm pointing at right here is actually snapped down on top of the pop connectors for the display. We're going to have to lift that up to get that screen out. <clears throat> Some of the other videos I've seen use metal tools. Um, I don't know. Uh, I think there's a few things in there that are easy to damage. And you can easily scratch the, the metal part of the phone. I'm pointing right now to the black gasket. So there's a little bit of adhesive there, just sort of pulled it away from the screen. And that's the adhesive that holds down the, the screen. So the black gasket I pointed to a minute ago, uh, we're going to leave that in place. Now this connector um, that I'm sort of pointing at with the tweezers, <clears throat> it's, it's not that it's hard to get up. It is a little bit... Uh, difficult uh, takes a little bit of persuasion to get it loose um, right now I'm just lifting the it's sort of down with some adhesive and I'm just raising it up so I can show you better so there's a sort of top and a bottom the uh, the connectors are mounted to the bottom bracket and the top one is actually hinged on one side the side that's facing uh, the camera right now don't know how well you can see that but it's hinged there and then on the other side it's sort of snapped down sort of a clip sort of a clip and uh, at first it takes a, a little bit of um, effort to just kind of get that clip um, which is really where you want to concentrate your efforts on getting that open um, but at first uh, you have to be careful uh, not to damage the connectors the pop connectors are are right there 
very close to the edges of those metal brackets. So you don't want to shove a tool in there and try and pry it up or do anything like that. You may damage the connectors. So you want to be very careful if you have to get a little bit of um, leverage under the top bracket. So once you get that kind of bent a little bit, it'll come out, it'll loosen up and come out pretty easily. Now you can see the two pop connectors for the display. Those are just like all the other pop connectors on the iPhones. So the new display uh, We'll go back in here in a minute. First, we're going to clean off some uh, leftover glass particles, um, any dirt, debris, or anything. Get that that edge all cleaned up. And uh, this is the adhesive that held the glass in. We're going to go ahead and take that off get it out of our way and it'll take a lot of the uh, leftover bits of glass with it and then you'll want to sort of go around the edge and make sure that there's nothing left behind So we're going to go ahead and clean uh, a little bit, clean a little bit of the edges there with just a cleaning cloth and some alcohol. Now I want to point out a couple of things about this gasket. This. Uh, gasket is actually the force touch sensor and there's a cable there and there those two cables are connected to that gasket and go under the battery and uh, connect underneath you don't want to tear those you don't want to cut into that you don't want to tear it rip it out pull it out or anything you can buy the force touch sensor gasket if you f don't feel comfortable um, doing this repair you can always buy that along with your display and that way just in case you did any damage to it you could actually replace it um, but then you do have a little bit of extra labor you have to get under the battery and stuff like that so it's best just to not do any damage to it to start with and it'll work fine when you're done So I've got this little blue piece of that uh, pick stuck in between the gasket and the middle. I'm trying to uh, get it out of there. You can see it there. So we're going to get that out of there. We're going to clean up any leftover mess, blow it out with some uh, high pressure air, and then clean it up again with a cloth once more we clean it really good just to make sure we get a nice bond with the new adhesive you can use your fingernails or you can use your spudger just so you get that surface all clean So there's probably some uh, pre-cut adhesive strips that you could probably purchase. I haven't really paid any attention, so I don't know 
I uh, imagine there probably is, but I have some that I like to use and uh, and I just cut them to fit. So this this part is a little bit a little boring. Uh, not that the whole not that any part of the video is exciting or anything, but this part especially is just me putting the uh, adhesive strips down. But when I am cutting my own strips here, you'll notice with the razor knife there that uh, I'm not cutting down into uh, the force touch sensor gasket. I'm actually cutting into the inside of the metal part of the of the watch so I don't do any damage to the gasket. And once we get all finished here, we'll have a we'll have covered and the entire surface all the way around without any gaps. So I'm trying to improve on my videos a little bit the best I can. Um, basically just using my phone. Um, sometimes I use a headset uh, along with the phone. So any, any dialogue or anything that I may have to say, uh, hopefully it will come through clear enough uh, that you can hear me, understand me. Um, so... Hopefully this video will turn out good and it'll be useful for someone. So I know there's there's other videos out there on this repair, so I know it's it's probably not, you know, the only video. Uh, obviously, iFixit has some instructions. Um, and there's a few other uh, ones that I saw. Um, hopefully, with mine at least, um, it, it covers some of the important things um, to, to sort of pay attention to. Play, some of these other ones may or may not actually cover some details that, that I think are important. Um, just for example, the bracket that's on the mat there, uh, when we first take that off, it's, it's not, it doesn't just magically come up real nice and easy like it does, um, like they show it on uh, iFixit, for example. It does take a little effort to get it, to get it loose before it will actually come off nice and easy. Also, the force touch sensor gasket, um, that's a big deal, you know. If you damage that um, and you don't have one handy, you're really going to inconvenience yourself and, and a customer, or, you know, if you're doing it for a customer, um, or if it's the first time you've, you've ever done one. And uh, I think it's important to, to point that out. Um, so that you don't uh, remove it or tear into it by mistake with your tool or cut into it or anything like that with the razor knife or whatever you're using. Um, <clears throat> that's another thing on iFixit, they show a razor knife uh, you know, to, to, to help get the gap started. I suppose um, you know, if it's your watch um, and the screen's not actually damaged and you just want to get in there and look at it that's probably you know more than effective way of, of helping get a gap started um, but you could also slip and you could cut yourself or you could um, scratch up the the metal 
uh, I mean, not that it didn't already have maybe some nicks and things in it if it got dropped and, and cracked the screen, it probably does, but still, you wouldn't want to do any more damage than, than is necessary. And here, what we're going to use is the spudger to, to put the pop connectors in place because I can't get my my fingers in there. It's uh, just the space is too small. And also, I want to be able to hopefully sh be able for you to be able to see it on the video. And then I put my fingers in once they're snapped into place and just make sure, double sure, that they're nice and, and firmly seated. And then we're going to put this back in. Uh, we're going to hinge it first. Uh, that side right there, which is a little bit blurry, um, is the hinge side. And then the other side is the clip side. So we're going to put the hinge side in first. And lay that thing down in there and put our finger right on in there and snap it down. Once it's snapped in place, it stays put. Then we're just going to go ahead and test the screen. Um, now I've already, I've actually already tested the screen so I know it works, but for the sake of this video, uh, from start to finish, um, going through the whole process from beginning to end, to just give you some concept of, of how much time it takes, I would say you need uh, about 30 minutes, give or take, um, to do the repair. I mean, I would allow about 30 minutes. It might not take you quite that long, uh, or it might take you a little bit longer, but that's a good roundabout time frame, I suppose. I didn't actually time it, so I don't know the exact time frame it took me to do it. Um, but some of this, uh, you know, doing the video uh, slows me down a little bit too, so. And we have touch. The buttons are working. So we're going to go ahead and take the uh, masking off of the adhesive tape. And we're getting near finishing up here. I suppose it shouldn't take more than 30 or 40 minutes to do this repair, although if you've done them a bunch of times, you know, you might be able to get it in less time than that. Um, if you've never done it, it might take you a little longer. Um, obviously, if you've done these a whole bunch of times this video, you're probably not even going to be watching it. Um, in any case, we are going to go ahead and... Um, seat the glass although we're going to adjust it a little bit the screen's reacting to my pressure as i push down so i can feel it vibrate when that happens you can't see it in the video obviously but you can see the screen uh react so the pressure the uh force touch sensor is working and we're just going to put the bands back on again just press the uh, release button slide them back in they hold in tight And then I'm going to put a little more uh, pressure on the screen and then uh, adjust it to till it's perfectly in, aligned. So right away in the very beginning after you've set it down you have a little bit of, you have a little freedom there to kind of adjust the screen a little bit. and we'll uh, even warm it up some one more time we'll add some pressure with the cleaning cloth and uh, make sure everything is seated real well So if we have any uh, adhesive sticking out anywhere like that, we'll just rub that out, get it off of there. And uh, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.